Hello everybody, we're going to hit you up with another presidential election. This one, the election of 1972. Nixon going for the second term. Can he get it done? Let's find that out right now. Now we're going to start off with the incumbent party, and that is the Republicans. Richard Nixon, the incumbent president from California, having changed his voting, voting residence there from New York, elected in 1968, and he really doesn't have any opposition to his renomination in 1972. He faces token opposition from Congressman Pete McCloskey of California and Congressman John M. Ashbrook of Ohio, but other than that, he wins all but one delegate to the Republican National Convention, and he's renominated pretty easily. His vice president, Sp Spiro Agnew from Maryland, he's going to be renominated for a second term as vice president. Now, the party's moderate wing and Nixon himself um, wanted to replace him. They wanted to replace him with a new running mate. The moderates favoring Nelson Rockefeller and Nixon favoring John Colony. John Connolly, John Connolly from Texas and Nelson Rockefeller from New York. But it was ultimately concluded that the loss of Agnew's basic conservative supporters would be too big of a risk. So Agnew is renominated. Now that we have our Republican ticket of Nixon and Agnew, same ticket I won in 68, let's go on to the Democrats. Now the Democrats are going to be, the Democratic nomination is going to be wide open. Fifteen people declare their candidacy for the, for the Democratic nomination for president. And those people are Senator George McGovern of South Dakota, Senator Hubert Humphrey of Minnesota, the 1968 Democratic presidential nominee, the governor of Alabama, George Wallace, Senator Edmund Muskie of Maine, the 1968 Democratic vice presidential nominee, Eugene J. McCarthy of Wisconsin, Senator Henry M. Jackson of Washington, Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm of New York, the first African-American, to vie for a major party nomination, Terry Sanford of North Carolina, the mayor of New York City, John Lindsay, Congressman Wilbur Mills of Arkansas, Senator Vance Harkey of Indiana, Senator Fred Harris of Oklahoma, the mayor of Los Angeles, Sam Yorty, Congresswoman Patsy Mink of Hawaii, the first Asian American to vie for the Democratic nomination, and Delegate Walter Fontroy of the District of Columbia. At the end of the day, it is going to be McGovern who receives the Democratic nomination for president, and he's originally going to bring along for the ride Thomas Eagleton, senator from Missouri, as his running mate. But after the Democratic National Convention, it was discovered that Eagleton had undergone psychiatric electroshock therapy for depression, and he had concealed this information from McGovern. So subsequently, um, he consulted confidentially with preeminent psychiatrists, including Eagleton's own doctors, who advised him that a recurrence of Eagleton's depression was possible and could endanger the country should Eagleton become president. So three days later, he asked Eagleton to withdraw. Um, Eagleton withdrew, and McGovern feared that Eagleton's medical condition would detract from his campaign platform, and Eagleton withdrawing, and the fact that he didn't stick with his running mate is really going to hurt his campaign. Instead, he's going to bring along Sergeant Shriver of Maryland as his new running mate. And that'll be the ticket running in this election. Now that we have our Republican ticket of Nixon and Agnew and our Democratic ticket of McGovern and Shriver, Let's head on to the campaign, put these guys into the ring, and see who's going to win this thing. Now, McGovern's going to run a platform of immediately ending the Vietnam War and instituting guaranteed minimum incomes for the nation's poor. His campaign was harmed, however, by his views during the primaries, which alienated many powerful Democrats. That, that perception that his, foreign policy, that his foreign policy was too extreme, and of course, the debacle with Eagleton. With McGovern's campaign weakened by these factors, the Republicans successfully portrayed him as a radical left-wing left -wing extremist and competent to serve as president. 
Nixon led in the polls by large margins throughout the entire campaign. Now, Nixon would run a campaign with an aggressive policy of keeping tabs on perceived enemies, and his aides committed the burglary of Watergate to steal Democratic Party information during the campaign. Now, before we head to the results, we're going to talk about a few scandals. On June 17th, five months before Election Day, five men broke into the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate Hotel in Washington, D.C. And we'll talk about the resulting investigation and all that next time. Now, as part of the continuing investigation in the, into the Watergate scandal, prosecutors offered companies that had given illegal campaigns campaign contributions to Nixon's re-election campaign. Many had sentences if they came forward. Many companies did comply, including Northrop Grumman, 3M, American Airlines, and Brain F Airlines as well. By 1976, prosecutors had convicted 18 American corporations of contributing illegally to Nixon's campaign. And with the campaign over with and all these scandals in mind, let's get to the results right now. This is going to be a drumbling, a drumbling for the Democratic Party. Richard Nixon and the Republicans, 520 electoral votes. McGovern, is, McGovern and the Democrats are only going to win Massachusetts and Washington, D.C., which only amounts to 17 electoral votes in this election. Um, only one other American would match, would surpass Nixon's performance in this election, and that is Ronald Reagan in 1984. In terms of the popular vote, it's going to be 60.7% for Richard Nixon and the Republicans, while McGovern and the Democrats received 37.5% of the popular vote. Now, Nixon's, Nixon does a little bit worse than Johnson did in 1964. Remember, Johnson has the best performance in the popular vote in American history, but his 23.2 percentage point victory is the widest margin in American presidential election history. Now, the Watergate scandal is going to yield some bad results for President Nixon, and we're going to talk about that next time in the election of 1976. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video, 1972 election. It is a drumbling, but this begins the Watergate scandal that's going to plague Nixon's second term, and it's going to lead him to end it prematurely. And we'll talk about that, as I said, next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a lot out of it. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos, go ahead and watch those if you want. And with that, we will see you next time at the election of 1976.